Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 220. Page number 220, problem number 15. Actually, the problem that we are about to do is actually is not in the book. This problem is not in the book. It is a bonus problem. It is very similar to 15. So when I say 15, I meant similar to it. Here is how the problem goes. If you have done, if you have done problem number 15 with me yesterday, then you, you should have no problem solving this problem on your own. I'm going to read it to you. After we have read the problem, I want you to pause the video and solve it yourself before you continue watching the video. Solve it yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I are going to do together in a, in a few seconds. Here is what it says. It says when a positive integer n, when a positive integer n is divided by 4, we get a remainder of 2. But when, this, when it is divided by 7, when you divide it by 7, it gives you a remainder of 1. The question simply is what is the least possible value of n that will do the job? Pause the video at this point, do it yourself and then continue watching the video. Okay, so here's what's going on. What's the smallest number that we can think of that will do the job that will meet the first condition which is when you divide it by 4 we get a remainder of 2. The smallest number would be simply we know 4, four, goes, in, four goes evenly into 4 and if you want a remainder of 2 just add 2 to it thereby we force it to have a remainder of 2. In other words 6 divided by 4 has a remainder of 2. So here our n is equal to 6. Our n is equal to 6 Let's put it in here. When n is equal to 6, what's the remainder here? We can't even talk about remainder because it's not even enough to divide divided. But technically speaking, 6 divided by 7 has a remainder of 6 if you want to be very, very uh, uh, pedantic that is. Uh, if you want to be very scholarly, pedantic means somebody who's being overly scholarly, somebody who likes to show off their knowledge too much. If you want to be pedantic, if you want to be very picky, 6 divided by 7 has a remainder of 6 because if you divide 6 by 7, how many 6's in a 7? 6 has no 7's in it. No 7's in it. No 7's in it, so the remainder is 6. Anyway, it does not have a remainder of 1. It does not have a remainder of 1. That does not do the job. 6 will not do the job. So, let's try the next one. The next one, can you think of a next smallest number which, when divided by 4, will give us a remainder of 2? Well, that's very simple. We take our 6 here that we had, and we add 4 to it. Because you know 4 divided by 4, that 4 goes even into 4 obviously. This one had a remainder of 2, therefore 6 plus 4 should still have a remainder of 2 because 6 plus 4 is 10. And this is going to be, this is going to be 10 divided by 4, which is simply, it will go, go 2 times and then we'll have a remainder of 2. It's a remainder of 2 here. So our n here is 10. Let's put it in here now. n is 10. 10 divided by 7 will give us a remainder of 3. That does not work either. Let's go on to the next one. Let's try 10 plus 4 over 4, which is 14 over 4. Again, it will, will go 3 times, we'll have a remainder of 2. Let's put the 14 here. 14 divided by 7 has a remainder of 0. That does not work either. Let's keep on going. We are, we are up to 14. We need to continue here. Where can we continue? Let's continue on this side. So here is our n divided by 4 with the remainder of 2 and here is our n divided by 7 with the remainder of 1. We tried 14, let's try 18. 18 divided by 4 of course will have 4 and a remainder of 2. Let's see what happens here. 18 divided by 7 will have a remainder of 4. We want a remainder of 1. That does not work either. Let's try 22. Just keep adding 4 each time. Each time you add 4, you go one more step. Again, this will have a remainder of 2, obviously. The remainder of 2. 22 divided by 4. And then what happens here? 22, 22 divided by 7. Ah, there we go. It has a remainder of 1. That one does the job. So what's, what's the least possible value of n that meets these two conditions? The answer is the least possible value that we found is 22 n is equal to 22. That's the least possible value that will satisfy the condition 
two conditions that is the two conditions that is first condition is that when you divide it by four it yields a remainder of two and when you divide it by seven it yields a remainder of one you want to do one more let's do one more let's do one more so sometimes you have to try a few times before before you find the one that works let's do one more I'll give you a second here in case you want to pause it here we go Let's do one more. These are all bonus problems. And the next one, it goes something like this. It says, when a positive integer n, when a positive integer n is divided by 5, the remainder is 1. When it is divided by 3, or rather this should say 3. When a positive integer n, when a positive integer n is divided by 5, the remainder is 3. When it is divided by 3, the remainder is 1. What is the least possible value of n? So let's, let's do it again. Now we know the procedure. So n divided by 5, we want a remainder of 3. And n divided by 3, we want a remainder of 1. So we begin our story. What's the, what's the smallest possible number that we can think of, smallest possible positive number that is, that we can think of that will yield the remainder of 3 when you divide it by 5? Well, that would be very simple. That's just simply 5 plus 3. 5 plus 3 divided by 5 will give us the remainder of 3 because we're adding 5 to it. 5 divided by 5 works. 5, five goes evenly into 5. 5 goes evenly into 5, which has a remainder of 0. So by adding 3 to it, we are forcing it to have a remainder of 3. This is by design. So 8 divided by 3, 8 divided by 5, that's the job. It has a remainder of 3. So here n is equal to 8. Let's put in here 8 divided by 3, which equals 2 and 2 thirds, which means the remainder is 2. We want a remainder to be 1. That doesn't do the job. Let's try 8 plus 3. 8 plus 3, which is 11, divided by 5. Now, something has gone wrong here. Are we dividing it by 5? Yes, we are dividing it by 5. Why am I adding 3 to it? 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. We want a remainder of 3. 8 divided by 5 had a remainder of 3. Oh, we are dividing it by 5, which, which means I need to add 5 to our thing here. We had an 8. If I add 5 to it, 5 divided by 5 has no, no remainder and 8 had a remainder of 3 therefore 8 plus 3 13 13 divided by 5 will have a remainder of 3 again which is uh, 2 and 2 and 3 fifths this one was 1 and 3 fifths you see so therefore now 13 does the job here let's put in 13 here 13 divided by 3 is uh, 4 and 1 third. What do you know? It has a remainder of 1. It has a remainder of 1, which is what we needed. We needed a remainder of 1. We found a number which, when divided by 3, yields a remainder of 1, and which, when divided by 5, yields a remainder of 3. This is the smallest number. 13 is the answer. 13 is the smallest number that does the job. 13 is the smallest number that does the job. As you go on, as you keep on going, we're going to find more numbers that qualify, that meets these two conditions. They're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, obviously, and there are infinite possibilities there. We just want the smallest one, and the smallest one is 13. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.